All right, we're going to shift gears a little bit here now, everyone, uh, and talk about position time graphs. Position time graphs, which are going to describe for us graphically what has been described for us up until now using words. What I want to do first is go over some shapes of some different position time graphs. By the way, let me tell you this before we start this, okay? Anytime you have a graph, anytime you have any graph, whether it's a position time graph or a velocity time graph or a force distance graph or a velocity versus velocity graph, anytime you have a graph, listen very carefully to this, the y-axis is listed first and the x-axis is listed second. So when we plot a position time graph, position is going to be on the y-axis and time is going to be on the x-axis. The y-axis, by the way, in this case position, is always going to be the responding variable. And the x-axis, in this case time, is always going to be the manipulated variable. You guys remember the difference between manipulated and responding variable? Yeah? That's right. That's right. The manipulated variable is the variable that you change. And there's only going to be, ever be one of them in any experiment. If there's more than one manipulated variable, it's a bad experiment. If you have three manipulated variables and you get a certain result, which variable caused the result? We don't know. We can only have one manipulated variable because we want to see what effect that changing that variable has on something. So one manipulated variable, and when you graph it, it's going to be on the x-axis of the graph, and you're going to list it second in the title. The responding variable, there's only one of those as well, by the way. Okay, one responding variable in every experiment. It's going to be the one that changes, potentially at least, because of the manipulated variable, because of what you did. It's going to appear on the y-axis of the graph, and it's going to be the first word in the title of the graph. Now, I've got five different shapes of graphs uh, shown on the board here right now. No numbers. Hey, I don't even care about calculating anything for this or determining anything from this other than what these different shapes mean. Okay, what's the significance of them? Okay, what does uh, the first graph or the third graph or whatever represent? What would be, this was a car driving on the road. What would be happening to this car when we're looking at each of these graphs here? So, let's go through the first one here. Position versus time. Okay, position on the y-axis, time on the x-axis. This is a straight line. What does it tell us is happening to the object, the car, the person, the bug, whatever it is in this graph? What's happening? What Describe the motion in words like we've been doing up until now that's represented by this graph. Bruce? Okay, the, okay, the, okay, good, perfect. You said it at the end there. It's increasing the position as time goes by. Hold on before you write this, okay, because I, I got a, a quicker way to summarize that. But I'm just going to go through the reasoning that Bruce used there. We're increasing the position as time goes by. So the position is getting bigger as time goes by. And then he said, what was the last thing you said? Okay, at a constant pace or at a constant rate. So... If the position is increasing at a constant rate, then what's happening? What's a nice way to summarize that in two words? What's going on here? Constant velocity. Constant velocity. So a car is driving to Calgary, and it's not speeding up, and it's not slowing down. It's constant velocity. Now, if it was a distance time graph, then we would say it would be constant speed. Position time graph constant velocity. So what about the second one now? What about the second one? Reason through this. Don't if you've done these before in Science 10, don't try to remember them. Okay, that's not what I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you to reason through them here. Not moving. Look at the look at the graph here. Okay, the line is at a certain position right here. Wes, what position is it at right here? I don't know what it is, but it's, Kelly, it's the same one. If it's the same position as time goes by, then the object is not moving. So it's stopped. 
Now, you're going to have a quiz tomorrow, not on this stuff, not on these graphs. But when you do have a quiz on these graphs, if I ask you what that means, you say not moving. You say stopped. Whatever. I don't care what you say as long as it means the same thing. What about that third one? Again, use your mind and reason. Don't just try to remember. What did Bruce say for the first one? He didn't say constant velocity, but that's what it meant, right? He said the position is increasing at a constant rate. Yeah. Good. The position is decreasing at a constant rate. So what's a way to summarize that in two words? The position is decreasing at a constant rate. Constant velocity, yeah, but... Actually, I should have said three words. Three words. Constant, yeah, let's say constant negative velocity. Now, let me explain what that means, constant negative velocity. A lot of people think, well, you're going backwards, right? Okay, yeah, that can be true. You're going backwards. But it doesn't mean you're... Like, so let's say this represents a car. It doesn't mean the car is driving in reverse. Right? When I drive to Calgary at a constant speed, this describes my motion. When I drive back from Calgary in the negative direction, in the south direction, at a constant velocity, this describes my motion. I don't have to be in reverse driving home from Calgary. Or if my car is in reverse and I'm going north, that's still a positive velocity. That's still graph number one. It doesn't matter which way the car is going forward or reverse. It matters whether it's going north or south or east or west, right? Fourth graph. It's a toughie, but again, use your, use your mind, reason through it based on what we've talked about for the first three graphs. Okay, go ahead. Good. Look what's happening here. Uh, Bruce said for the first one that the position is increasing at a constant rate. Here the position is increasing as well, right? But it's not a constant rate. The position is increasing quicker and quicker as time goes by, right? So if it's if the position is increasing quicker and quicker and quicker, it means it's speeding up. And what's another word for speeding up? Acceleration. I'm going to say a positive acceleration. Now, that term acceleration, understand that we, um, we haven't defined that yet. We will define that, but all of us have, I, I think, some grasp as to what that means, kind of speeding up, right? What about the last one here? The last one that I have drawn. There's a couple more that I want to show you, actually, that I don't have drawn. But it's the last one. This is a negative acceleration. What's happening here? Position is getting bigger, but you're slowing down. So here, this one, maybe you're driving towards Calgary, and as you drive towards Calgary, you're speeding up as you drive towards Calgary. Here, it's not like you're going backwards. Your position is still getting it's small here. It's getting bigger, 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 bigger. You're still getting further away from Okadooks, closer towards Calgary. You're still going in the positive direction. But as you do that, you're slowing down to a point where look, it's almost flat to a point where you're almost stopped. Okay, that's a negative acceleration. Speeding up, positive acceleration. I'm going to put that in brackets down here. Speeding up, and my negative acceleration here is going to be slowing down. Are good there? Do those make sense? Right, know those, know those. But more important than knowing those is reasoning through those. You could easily get a graph on an exam 
that's slightly different that you have to kind of reason through. So it's not just memorizing the exact diagrams you see here, it's understanding the diagrams so that you can reason through something that's a little bit different. Let me give you one more actually, one more before we wrap it up for the day. Position time graph. Hey, which axis does position go on? Y axis, because I call that position time. Um, is position the manipulated variable or the responding variable? Responding, because it always goes on the Y axis. So we're going to say position versus time. You can copy this down or not copy this down. It's up to you on this one. What does this one mean? Well, you really got to think about this one, because I'm pretty sure you've never seen this one before. What does this one mean? Yeah, go on. Yeah, instant acceleration. Okay, I kind of like that term, actually. Um, your, your position is increasing without any time going by. So it's like an infinite acceleration almost, right? Or an infinite velocity at least, which isn't possible, right? So th this isn't possible. You can't, look, I mean, think about this, guys. You can't go from there to there without any time going by, unless you go through a wormhole or something, right? Which that's a whole other day. So this one's not possible. Right? So again, we reason through it to determine um, that it's not possible. You can't do anything without time going by. Right? Okay, let's wrap it up for there for today.